All right, it's time for assignment four. And assignment four takes your fantasy creature that you've already designed and you've already cut out nicely. And what we are going to do is recreate it as a cloud. So I call it the cloud creature assignment. Now clouds come in lots of various forms, right? Lots of different edges, lots of different lighting, uh, even different color values. And clouds can exist without the sky behind them. So this will be the first project we're doing where we actually paint pixels. But the only pixels we're, we're gonna physically paint is just the gradient of the sky behind our cloud. All the clouds we're going to composite in, and it's going to be like a, a pellet that we make of cloud stuff, like a bunch of cotton candy. And then we're going to, the tools we're going to focus on are how to stretch that cotton candy, how to clone stamp it, how to smudge it, and make it into what we want. Maybe dodging and burning it if we need to. And it really depends on the kind of creature we're trying to suggest. Now, I like these student examples because you can see um, they rely a lot in the imagination. And we don't want cloud, we don't want like cloud cookie cutters of our creatures because that's not believable. So the main goal here is to try to create a believable cloud. And then the, the gravy on top of that is that that believable cloud suggests a creature. Some clouds are far away and hard edged. Others are super wispy barely there at all. So you get to decide how best to use the clouds to describe your creature. And you can decide as well if you want to put them on just blank blue sky or if you want to composite clouds into the background as well. So it's like a big sheet of clouds that your creature is part of. So some people love this assignment, maybe about 20% of students, <laughs> because it's just fun pushing clouds around. But those of you who will really like to get something right might have a lot of trouble with this assignment because it can be frustrating to be limited to just clouds as your material. So how do we get it started? The first thing we're going to do is make it a, a folder for it. So we've made our assignment three folder. Now we're going to make an assignment four folder. And the only element we need for it from past assignments is the same element that we used in assignment three that we stole from assignment two, and that is the PNG of our finished creature. Right. So I'm going to hold down Option and drag and drop that to the desktop so it makes a copy of it and then move that into assignment four. And then I can move assignment three away and now I am going to open hmm, no this is what I want to do so now before I start looking for clouds I'm going to open Photoshop and create a new file brand new so file new because now if we're just creating a cloud within an open frame we get to decide exactly what that format should be we don't need to use whatever we use for our creature. So we are going to do our standard, which is 14 inches wide. Unless your creature is just really tall, I think you should probably use a landscape format. And 11 inches tall. At what's our standard resolution for this lab? 350. Professional standard is 300, but our lab standard is 350. Then everything else, the defaults. All right, so now we are going to bring our PNG creature, cut out, drag and drop it right into it. And it should pretty much fill the space. Go ahead and hit return. Feel free to tilt it, shrink it a little bit, whatever you think. Next, we're going to duplicate that creature. So how do we duplicate this layer? 
Command J, excellent. When we do animating, which is our next assignment, and we have a few days for that, you're going to be command j so much you will never forget. So now with this duplicate, we're going to hit command T to transform it and shrink it into the corner. We can shrink it into the left corner, into the right corner. You just want like a little token, token image of your creature so that you can remember what what kind of creature you're trying to suggest with your cloud. You can put it up into the upper right hand corner. It's up to you. I guess I might put mine. Yeah, I'll put it down. Okay, next, we need to start grabbing some clouds. So before I go any further, I've made multiple layers. I'm going to save this with a name. So go to file, save as. And I'm going to use my name and then assignment four, and I call this cloud creature to the desktop as a PSD. Now I can go to Google and I'm going to do an image search. We're all going to do the same image search for clouds. And we want them to be large. But clouds are a little bit more forgiving than other reference. Why is that? Because generally, clouds are soft-edged, right? And what's the problem with having a reference that's too, too small is that when you enlarge it, the pixels soften. But generally, you can, you can soften clouds, and they'll still look like clouds. So what I'm doing is I'm just right-clicking and opening in new tabs. Any cloud that looks like it might be useful. Notice there's different colors. Here is a Photoshop cloud you know, tutorial. but we're not using brushes to do it. We're going to do compositing. Right? And it's only going to, and I'm on large, which means everything will be at least 1,000 pixels in one dimension. But it's better if it can be, you know, over 2,000 by 2,000, if possible. And there's just no shortage of clouds. Ah, but this one. You might find one that's just really helpful. And once I've opened in a new tab five or so of them, I have three so far. You want clouds that, that all feel like they have the same lighting, roughly. This one's nice. So if you have storm clouds like this with really heavy shadows underneath, you just want to find a lot of reference of storm clouds because it's really hard to, to composite bright backlit clouds with, with heavy storm clouds. This one's huge. It's a little bluish, but you can always change color, you know, with color balance. This one's nice. And you want kind of a mix of some that are a little bit harder edged, a little softer edged. Be careful of ones that have so much color, right? Because you can use them and they're very pretty, but then you'll have to keep matching those colors, which can be tricky. All right, I think I have enough. So now how do I check them? I open the image in a new tab, and I see how they are. You see how it's already soft edged? That's pretty good. Let me minimize Photoshop here and start saving these into my assignment four folder. Now you wanna see them full size. You wanna open them in a new tab. And you know, this one, it's already kind of pixelated even at this low resolution, so I don't want it. I want high quality paint for this. 
and these clouds are my paint. That's nice and crisp. That's going to be very useful. And over the weekend, if you want to take some photo of clouds, Texas has nice big clouds this time of year. A lot of students will composite their own photos for this project. So this one just isn't big enough. It's a broken tag. This one also looks like it's not going to be big enough. Broken tag. Yep. So that's frustrating, but it shouldn't keep me from being able to do what I want to do. This one's not huge, but at least it's good quality for its size. So I might use that. All right. So once you have some cloud reference, you can close Google down. Oh. Sometimes you have to save image as. Let's see if you can have an option. Nope. And so sometimes the best thing you can do is take a screen grab, a targeted screen grab, Command Shift 4, of the part of the, the image you want, because this is protected as a web only file. So it can only be opened by a web browser. But you can always screen grab. It's just not the greatest resolution. But that, that image wasn't any bigger than a screen anyway. I might grab one more. Just so I have them. Maybe two more. So you know it's best not to have to rely on bad references. OK, so now I can close this. I go back to my Photoshop file. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in some of those clouds. And the first one I'm going to bring in is the one that I think is the biggest kind of default cloud. That will work. So I drag and drop it in over the top of my creature. And I can take the opacity down a little bit. So I have it down to like 50%. And then I'm going to stretch it. It's like rolling dough. If the creature is my cookie cutter, I want to make sure I have enough cookie dough behind it so that it shapes it. And I'm stretching this cloud, stretching it. I don't want any of that grass in there. I just want cloud material. You never want grass in your cloud cookies. It's disgusting. OK, so now I hit Return. I've stretched out the cloud to cover my creature. It's like a texture overlay. I'm going to put the opacity of the cloud back at 100%. And then I'm going to turn off those layers in front of my creature and go to my creature layer. And this is the big lesson. This is the only place we need to get by the end of, beginning of next class. I am going to select the empty space around my creature using the magic wand. I'm going to have contiguous unchecked in case there's any undercuts. I'm going to select all that empty space. And hopefully it's a nice clean cut. Then I'm going to move up to my cloud layer, turn it on, select it. And I'm going to say select inverse. So swap the selection from outside empty space around my creature to now a cookie cutter. And now how do I cut this cookie out of the cloud? I duplicate. I hit Command J. And what that does is give me a little cookie cutter of cloud right, in the shape of my creature. OK, the last thing we're going to do is paint a sky behind it. And to do that, we can simply do Edit Fill. 